Some people suffer from sore and numb hands. Now we can place our hands in a variety of positions on the bar and Gary will demonstrate those. Out on the hoods. Heels of the palms against the hoods. Drops and deepen the drops. Now if you suffer from sore hands on a bike, the first question to ask yourself is why? The usual reason is we're bearing too much weight on them. Why are we bearing weight on them? We shouldn't. We need to sit, seat back far enough to unload the upper body. If the bars are high enough, there won't be significant weight on the bars. Providing brake hood height is sensible and seat position is sensible, the only way you'll have sore hands on a bike is if you bear too much weight on them or suffer from some pathological problem with the hands. Now, forgetting pathological issues for the moment, if we lower Gary's bars significantly, and move his seat forward substantially. Hang on, Gary, I'll just push. So this is a reasonably extreme example. I've just moved Gary's seat forward substantially and lowered his bars. Those two measures combined to shift his weight forward and down and onto his hands. If you bear a lot of weight on your hands, they will get sore. Now, assuming you don't have too much weight on your hands, bar shape itself can cause problems in some cases. Now, the key factors with a handlebar are choosing a bar that is deep enough to fit your hand in and choosing a bar with a, a, a low rate of upper drop slope. The flatter the bar is in this position, the better. Now, there's no point in radically raising a bar, as you'll see some people do, to achieve a nice flat position here because when Gary goes back down here deep in the drops, Gary? Angling the bar like that causes Gary to drag down his upper body and extend it further out. Much better to have the bar at an angle at the bottom of between zero and five degrees. So anything from there to there, depending on your preference, will work. Now, the more, the more open the radius of the bar, the better the potential for brake hood placement, which in turn has an effect on wrist angle and hand comfort. So to summarize, we need enough room in here for the hand comfortably. We need the flattest possible shape at the top and obviously enough width for the shoulders. Now when I say we need enough room in the drop to fit your hand, not everyone's hands are as wide as mine are. This is what's called a shallow drop bar. As you can see, I can't comfortably fit my hand in there. There's a big air gap. If I'm forced to ride like that going hard, I load up the base of my, my palm there and I load up the webbing of my thumb here. The other thing I don't like about this bar is it has a rapid drop from the top and a tight minimum, minimum radius of bend. That means as the brake hood comes up, the brake lever gets too far away for small-handed people that these are supposed to be designed for. Now this is an anatomic bar. As an anatomic bar goes, it's not a bad shape. I don't like this kink here because in, that, in a sprinting position it doesn't fill your palm, but that can be filled in. However, it's quite flat at the top of the bar, has quite an open minimum radius, and a hand the size of mine fits in there comfortably. Now in drop and forward reach, these bars are identical, but I don't like this bar at all. As you can see, a sharp upper drop slope and a tight minimum radius. So even though these bars are identical in measurement, they're not in shape, hand positions are much more limited here because the hoods will be further down and the wrist will be rolled over. And, it's, and there's no smooth transition from putting a brake hood here. There's a sharp slope and then a brake hood. On a bar like this, the brake hood, the brake hood merges into the, the top of the bar.